welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 181. This episode is with the delightful, multi-talented legend that is Kieran Shaw. This show could easily have been three hours long, and we still would have only covered a fraction of Kieran's incredible work. In this episode, we do talk about him getting his start at the Red Buddha Theater Company, learning mask and mime technique, how he got into stunts, being Superman's scale double, working on the Dark Crystal, being an Ewok in Return of the Jedi, getting hanged in Braveheart, his amazing work on Lord of the Rings as Frodo's scale double, getting tossed around by Viggo Mortensen, having two world records, and so much more. Kieran is fantastic, and you are in for a treat, my friends. So, without further ado... Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 181, with Kieran Shaw. Theme song time. busy these days uh yeah i mean i was going to start work in norway but uh because of the covid movie the movie got postponed it gotcha they're going to go ahead but they're going to wait so uh in the meantime waiting for something to come in but i will be uh, cool i'll be busy again i'm always glad to hear what an actor's busy i've been very lucky i mean you know over the last 40 odd years yeah. From 2020, apart from that year, but I always kept on working. Is that wild when you think about just how long it's been? Like, does that, you're like, wow, it's been, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long time, for it that way. Uh, well, 40 years is a long time. <sighs> it, is. it is. Does it feel like 40 years or does it feel like you're still getting started? Uh, it doesn't feel like 40 years, for yeah. it that way. It's, it doesn't feel like it started. But the time has flown so quickly. Sure. How could it not? Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. You've done some pretty cool stuff. I remember, speaking of COVID, that poem that you wrote, United, was great. Yeah. I didn't realize you did poetry. I write poetry. I got my second book out. How long have you been doing that? I've been writing poetry since I've been about 12, 12 years old. Yeah. It was a really... Because I left Kenya and then moved into India. But because of my father's health in India was not good, so we came to London. My brother was already in London, so we joined him. And my father's health improved. Mm-hmm. I've carried on with my studies. Great. And uh, then got into the theaters over here. Wow. That's pretty neat. How long were you in Kenya before you moved? Uh, I was born in Kenya in 56, and I moved to London in 70. Gotcha. Okay. That's a pretty good amount of time. Yeah. I mean, I was t- going to become 12 at that time, I think. Yeah. Gotcha. When did your interest in acting start then? My acting career, uh, career well, not career, uh, the dream started from Kenya. Cool. Uh, when I was about seven, eight years old. Uh, watching Bollywood movies, uh, Western movies, and te- uh, TV. Yeah. So I'm interested in that. And not only that, but I used to take Mickey out of my uncle's mannerisms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Mickey, that really got me interested that this is what I want to do. That's neat. What Was it It was Bollywood movies, so you always wanted to do movies? Or was it theater or just any kind of acting? Any kind of acting. Yeah. Any kind of acting. but especially into movies. Uh, yeah, Bollywood was there, yeah. the idea. Uh, Hollywood was the idea as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, was, I, I used to watch both Bollywood and Hollywood movies in Kenya. Sure. Did you have any favorites? Uh, I think it would have been Dr. No. I was quite young when I saw. That was my first Hollywood movie. Ooh, that's a that's good one. Fun. Yeah, and that was like, yeah, I love, you know, what, what I saw there. So then how old were you when you started, like, actually pursuing acting? Uh, I started when I was 17 years old, still in a school. And what happened was that one day I picked up a magazine called 
came out in 1973, probably, uh, I think, October or November, something like that. Yeah. For the first time. And at the back of the came out, uh, you know, back of the page uh, in time, uh, there was a theater board for looking for so-and-so actors or this kind of actors or whatever. Sure. And I saw an advert about a theater company called Red Buddha Theater Company. That was a Japanese theater company that had come from Japan into London. A guy called Stomoya Master. Uh, at that time, he made a quite a big name for himself in America and over here in Europe as well. He had a play, it was a kind of a mind play called Man from the East. Ooh. And the storyline was uh, a day in the life of Hiroshima and the bomb. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, I went, uh, the Japanese actors were let go, uh, apart from a couple of the cap. And then he advertised for the English actors to get involved in this. And that's how I got involved in that. Oh, cool. Was it like traditional theater? Was it like kabuki or? There was a, it, it was kind of a mixture. Oh, cool. Uh, kabuki plus kind of Western ideas. It was mime, clowning, dancing. And it, I mean, there, it was a proper storytelling with no dialogue. Wow, that's almost harder. Yeah, it was it was a musical with, I mean, when the theater company came in, uh, they still had uh, guitars and drums, not just uh, Japanese instruments. Sure, the big timpani. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and uh, the play did really well in the uh, U.S. and in Europe. And then... Uh, I ended up doing a tour of Italy. Oh, cool. With that, yeah. Wow. That's right into the deep end on your first gig. Yeah, learning. Yeah, it's certainly fun. I mean, I had to learn. When we were rehearsing, uh, I had no idea how to work with mask or anything. And I was taught by him what to do. Still my master. Wow. He told me, you can't put the mask on. you got to study the mask. you got to pick up things that you can notice in the mask, like wrinkles, moles, big nose, small nose, big forehead, or whatever. Yeah. And it's something and you can use that to your advantage. Then you play with the mask, put that mask facing up on your hand, on the palm, and play with it, turning around and, you know. Yeah. Try, you know, like like the way you, you would move your neck. Yeah. And you can different expressions with your mouth, face, whatever. And you can see that. And then you do it in front of the mirror and doing the same thing, moving up, down, this, that, whatever. And suddenly you find within a couple of days, your body is moving with it. Oh, it's almost like puppetry. Puppetry, yeah, it is puppetry. That's really cool. I've never heard of that before. That makes sense. Because if you're if the mask is looking at you, you're getting an outside view of yourself. Yeah, exactly. And you can see that, that your body is going with it. And that's when you go, now, you know, you play play with it for a quite long time. And then you go, okay, I'm ready to put that on now. And I can take the character. And that's, you create character that way. Wow. It's like the mask becomes its own character first. Yeah. And then yeah. you learn to be, that's really cool. I've never heard of that before. How long did you do that? Uh, I did that for about two or three years. That's a long time. Uh, not with the same company. Uh, then I started moving on with different companies in French and started picking up a lot of, uh, even in Red Buddha, I started picking up how to juggle three balls oh. or how to do mine properly. Sure. You know, the roll and the rope and the walk and storytelling with your body in mind. Yeah. I learned a lot in that one theater. And then as I, as I started moving on with different French company, and all of them were more, more or less mime companies that I was involved with. And I learned new thing. And it was a good uh, three years work. Wow. Yeah. And because everybody used to do Marcel, Marcel. No, like, okay, I'm now getting a little bit fed up with this. Yeah. So I moved on <laughs> and I tried to get into the movies. Well, that's such a specific skill set. It's like you yeah. went the technical side of it first. That's really neat. Yeah. 
And then when did you get into movies? Because that's uh, different. In 70s. Yeah, well, it, it is really. Uh, what happened was one day in, I think in 1976, uh, going through stage and television magazine and at the back of, again, you know, last few pages were the adverts for looking for a TV program, looking for this actor or whatever. Sure. And I saw this fantastic advert, a sci-fi movie, uh, looking for a little guy. And that was it, nothing more. Oh, <laughs> and uh, uh, casting director, contact casting director Irene Lamb. Oh, perfect. So, uh, yeah, wrote a letter to her, and uh, a telegram came back within the technology of text yeah. <laughs> and emails and anything like that. But a telegram came through at my house. Uh, could you bring Irene Lamb as soon as you can? It's important, right? Yeah. So, and made an appointment to see her at the Fox, 20th Century Fox building in Seoul. Ooh, pretty good. Right, a week after I went and saw her at the Fox building, mm -hmm. and I was let in into the room where she was, and she asked me a few questions about what have we done, and I mentioned Red Buddha to begin with. And she oh, went, oh, great. what do we do in Red Buddha? And I went, well, you know, that's where I learned about mime and mask and all that stuff. And she went, oh, what, what do you mean by mask work? And I went, well, two-dimensional fixed expression mask. Give me that. And I can give you a character out of that. And they went, well, you can really do that. Yeah, why well, I can and all that. And she went, okay, you are the right height. You are perfectly formed. I'm going to call my director and let's see if I can get you an appointment. And she got me an appointment. And now week after, I had to go to the studios. Whew, that's fast. Were you nervous? I was nervous. Uh, what happened was the car came to pick me up and and took me to the studios. Oh, pretty good. And getting there, my brother came with me. Uh, just to keep me calm. <laughs> <laughs> smart. <That's> a... <laughs> yeah, smart move. It yeah. was a smart move, yeah. So we got there. And I was introduced to the director called Lucas. Ah, I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah. And I got introduced to Lucas. He, he took me to his office with my brother with me, tagging along with me. And we had a little little conversation about how would you feel inside a robot and stuff like that. And I went, yeah, that would be fine. And, and I'll also be able to handle it. And he went, okay, took me to the workshop and put me on a prototype R2-D2. Uh-huh. This was when Kenny Becker had decided, we had decided to leave. And he didn't uh, leave the R2-D2. Mm -hmm. He had walked away from it. Uh, and this was, you know, I think, pre-production. -pre sure. But nothing was filmed or anything. Right. And uh, so I got into the R2-D2. I was a tad taller by about an inch or inch and a half. So ah. I had to you know, twist, my, uh, twist my neck a little bit near you know, oh, the no. <laughs> side and get inside the thing. And I started moving it, moving the head and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the way it used to go wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, I did, and at that time, it was like, oh, yeah, your legs, legs can come up. Maybe you can make it roll as well. And I went, yeah, did that. And then I went, okay, right, fine. I did that for about three, four hours, coming in Ooh. and going in and adjusting things here and there and stuff like that. Sure. And finally, we got it right, and they went, okay, that's fine. Uh, after they were doing that test and everything, they went, okay, you can go home. Uh, you know, and the car brought me and my brother back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went, uh, after a couple of tests, they went, you're in, and we'll give you a contract and all that. Hey. And I'm going to be in, and a week after that, they rang back. Uh, oh, Irene Lamb ran back and went, Kieran, I got a really bad news before you. And I'm going, yes. And she went, uh, Kenny Becker has decided to come back, our first choice. Uh, and we're going with him. Mm. Uh, so we can't 
you know, employee, you know, like, oh, you know, sad. Sure. And something like that. And she kind of felt that, I think, on the phone. Sure. And she went, look what I'm going to do for you. So I'm going to get you an agent because I didn't have an agent at that time. Oh, wow. And carry on from that. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. To lose a job and then to get an agent who gets you more jobs, not yeah. a bad trade. Exactly. Yeah, she got me a, a kid's agent as well. Oh, perfect. It was that one. Go, yeah, and it worked out well with their agent. Usually the story ends with, and then they went with the first choice. But this went a little bit further. Yeah. <laughs> So then when, because I know you, you've had like just as successful a career as an actor as you had as a stuntman. At yeah. what point did you decide to do stunts too? Or was it always from the beginning? Uh, no, it wasn't from the beginning. Uh, okay, this new agent, after a month, gave me a call and went, uh, can you go to Pinewood Studios? Uh, you know, take a taxi or find out how to get there. Sure. Like also underground or wherever, and I went okay, right, fine. Uh, they will say no, this is for a movie called Kendall Sue. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. it was a Disney movie with a uh, young Trudy Foster and David Newman. And so I went there, and she told me that you are going to be standing in for a trial character. Sure. So I went there, and. Uh, went into this hall at Pinewood, you know, big room. Sure. And uh, where they were uh, auditioning a lot of uh, kids to be the standing for their kids. Ah, okay. And they brought out this uh, Japanese girl, uh, half Japanese girl, uh, who was going to play a Chinese character in the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went, can you stand back to back? Both of us. And uh, they saw that and they went, uh, yeah, you are, we are both the right height or Kiran, you are the right height. And yeah, you'll be perfect. We'll call you your, uh, we'll call your agent and uh, book you. And that's how we are going to the movies. Now, how I got into stunts was on this movie, Kendall Sue, while doing the standing in for a quite a long time. And then we went on to the location. Mm -hmm. And one day on location, uh, Bob Anderson, the stunt coordinator, uh -huh. he, I mean, he must have kept an eye on me for quite, uh, quite a long time. <laughs> and one day he came round to me and he went, Kieran, from the back with your frock and with your black long wig, we can't tell the difference between you and the girl. <laughs> and I went, what do you mean by stunts? And what do you entail? And the, well, you're not going to do very high force or anything like that. It's just going to be a simple fight. You're hanging on onto somebody around their neck, you know, mm -hmm. holding on their neck. And they are turning around and around fast and all, wherever. And you let go and you'll kind of fly back and land somewhere. Sure. You know? But, and we'll teach you. And uh, even can you do your uh, breakfast? Ah. And I went, yep, I done to do up to the yellow belt in the school. I can do that. Sure. And perfect. You can do that, then you're fine. You'll be okay. And that's so all my stunt life started. Wow. Pratfall, the, the bread and butter of stuntmen. Yep. I suddenly you look brilliant. I mean, you know, at the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. I like that he kind of kept an eye on you. He's like, I think, I think we could throw him around. I yeah. think we could. And you're like, absolutely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And probably you got the right idea. Yeah. <laughs> you're very aerodynamic, I've heard, Kieran. <laughs> like a Superman. <laughs> like a Superman, which is a great segue, Kieran. I see where you, yeah. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> How did you book Superman? You were Superman uh, scale that, double. Oh, double. Yeah, scale double. That was really funny as well. From the same agent, I got a call again uh, because by this time, I already done an acting movie and I was on to something else and then Superman thing came out mm -hmm. and uh, somebody must have known about it. That is called an agent. Let's give him a call. Uh, one of the coordinator, I think it was Vic Armstrong. 
I oh, didn't great. move it didn't become strong on people that time forgot. Right. And remember me from that because I did a stunt in that movie, my own stunt for my own character. Yeah. Right. I've seen your work. Yeah. Yeah. So he must have remembered that. Uh -huh. And uh, what happened was that uh from that uh we went for the audition uh, to do the wire work and never done wire work at all in oh, the park. Sure. And what happened was in the uh, wire work, uh, they wanted to see whether I can handle it or not or uh, all that. And uh, what happened was they put me on the wire, got me up straight, you know, straight on the wire and went hard if they took me up, up, up about 25 feet, I think. Ooh. They went hard if fill up there. And they went, you don't have to do anything at the moment. We'll throw you around or you're flying around. So I was standing up straight in the harness. Uh, back up, uh, back pickup with, no, sorry, two side pickup uh, with uh, two wires coming from the side. And they took me around uh, into this uh, banana kind of a turning. Oh. And, uh, that was, and that was around the studio uh, inside the sound state. Sure. Right? Go oh, what that happened, and they did a couple of runs, well, yeah, something like that, and then and they went, how do you feel? And I went, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm good. Brought me down again, and then they put the pickup rather than from uh, near the chest area of the side, they brought it down to my waist, and they went, now uh -huh. you need to counterbalance and go into that lying mode. Yeah, now you're flying. Flying, yeah, like the Superman. Yeah, and then now you got to keep that balance, and we can adjust everything. But you won't have to work hard to keep that balance. You sure. will be fine. And then the, without doing that, you know, the arm thing, uh -huh. one arm in front and one at the back. Yeah, that, it's like a Superman. Go and uh, with both arms by the side and flying and flying and flying. And then slowly they got me into the Superman pose and they go, no. And, uh, and then they told me what to do. As you go into banana, mm -hmm. uh, and turn your body and slide like you're turning to your right or left or whatever, whatever they tell you. Yeah. And, and that went down. And wow. put me down. There's a couple of other uh, uh, small actors in the audition. Mm -hmm. And I think next day the agent rang up and they went, they want you, you know. Wow. Uh, on the sound stage for about five months, doing nothing but flying. What a gig. How fun was yeah. that? That was really, really fun. That was, I mean, you know, to double for Christopher Reeves. Yeah. Him, working with him, became quite friendly with him. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Weston. Always looking that department, flying department, became really good friends with him as a you know, him as a coordinator. He was yeah. really good working with Bob Harmon, was doing the wire work, and we went to work with you know this really good team. Man, how do you top that? If your job is to fly around the studio as Superman, that's a, no. it doesn't get cooler. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was really, really good fun. Man. And, and for months, your job, like, when pe you realize some people are like, oh, I'm going to work as a painter, going to work as a waste staff. You're like, I'm going to work to fly. Yeah. No, it's not bad. It's not no, bad. No, it was even kind of terrible. But at the same time, what happened was that uh, Paul went, okay, we are going to start training you to become a stuntman. Oh, cool. So they will bring up uh, props, uh, mini trumpet, and they will, you know, take me out to bounce on it and you know, do that and put a mat out and bounce and sure do a something and you know land on your back on the mat and stuff like that. So you know there were things coming out like that, and uh, then Paul went. You know, every time you do a different movie, we are going to keep uh, keep teaching you. Wow, I love that when you talk like there's that old adage that luck is preparation meets opportunity, yeah. and like you're yeah. just preparing all these skills yeah. at this time. <laughs> Exactly. I love it. Exactly. And we talked about uh, Wake Armstrong. 
when people did time for God. Yeah. Mark the gold bolum. Oh yeah. When people did time for God. Uh, and his dad was falling into Belkino after his master. Yep. And I demanded that I wanted to do that. And uh, I used to, I think I annoyed the director, Kevin O'Connor, demanding that I want to do the stunt. I want to do the stunt every day. Yeah. And, <laughs> and when Vic, can you talk, take him out to do the high fall? And Vic taught him how to do a high fall on that movie. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, from my second movie, I started seriously getting wow. into stunt. And you like it? Yeah. Well, now I'm at the age where I'm going, yeah, I'm going to calm down. I yeah. Do <laughs> you're, you're a little more breakable now, just a little yeah, bit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but when still, I do well, some stuff anyway. Is it when you're younger, you're made of Tupperware. You just bounce back. Yeah. It's yeah. not a problem. Exactly. <laughs> One day you, you do the same stunt you've been doing forever and something pops a little. You're like, Oh, okay. Oh, I, yeah. I don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you become the actor that time remembered. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I know from Superman shortly after, is that was that when Return of the Jedi came around? Return of the Jedi came quite quite a bit later. Uh, after Superman, uh, I got involved with Dark Crystal. Oh, right. How cool was that? Movie, yeah. Tim Henson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had a meeting with Jim. Uh, and on the on the first meeting, he asked me, you know, what was my background in the industry. And I went, well, I started out as my artist and doing all this, you know, walks and all that and all working with Moss. And he went, how would you feel? You know, working with Moss that might be moving his presence and stuff like that if we can get that and I went fine uh that would that would be good and then he went uh then he there was a skull on the table of skepsis oh oh right (laughs) and what what do you think of that uh or what do you think that looks like and I went like a vulture yeah and they went and they went yeah how do you think uh that would move and I started Hopping on my leg and moving my neck. Oh, side perfect! Side. In that moment, yeah. They went, can you cut out the hop? And can you just give us a walk and do that? And I started doing that. Ooh. The walk and uh, my neck going from side to side, mm-hmm. the whole head kind of, you know, like an Indian dancer. Yeah. God did that, and that went fine, perfect. You are in. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, so I got, uh, by that time, I had a different agent anyway now. Mm-hmm. And what happened was, uh, uh, they gave me the character of the term Chamberlain. Uh, oh. That Frank Oz was operating as a puppet. Yeah. And I was walking, moving, walking, running, and stunt uh, Chamberlain. Oh, because wow. he was doing stunts as well. And uh, they went, okay, you can do that. A few days or a few week, weeks later, uh, Jim went, oh, can you also do my uh, d- a train? Yeah. You know, and you know, you can do walk, walk, running, stunts, whatever we tell you to do, but they do it. Now, when you all do the, those two characters, and suddenly they realized that this little guy can do a lot of multiple things. Yeah. And, Characters and they just started drawing quite a few characters as we went along. You know, the first time you see the baby lens riders. Yes. Oh, that was there you. Three. Yeah, there were three. Yeah. Yeah, and the baby one was me. What? The third one, yeah. Wait, did you have stilts? Yeah, on the on the four four stilts. Robbie Barnett, who was a clown and a skill walker at the time. Huh. And he used to do twenty four to stilts. That's how the idea came through. Uh, uh, Brian, uh, Brian, and uh, Jim uh-huh. uh, walking through the uh, sound stage, and they saw Robbie walking on the stills. Sure. And, and Brian went, "Yeah, let's try this. Can be on the stills." Wow. Had you done still work before? No, 
โรบีโรบีโรบีจอดมาคัพพอร์ตเดอร์อัลเดอร์แอคเตอร์สเปอร์ฟอร์มัสเอาคอร์ดวอล์กออนเดอะสตีลส์แอสเวลส์มีฮู้ just say yes huh yeah and yeah to start with the two steels and then on the four steels and then we went on the four we were in the harness Oh. And, uh, and a wire with a pickup in the uh, in the back, with bending down or fall. So if you oh. fall, the wire people can hold you. You have insurance. Yeah. Is it yeah. harder to do two or four? Four is harder. Yeah. Because four is that you really need to keep your balance. All mm. oh, right, right. Whereas two, otherwise, you can kind of. Yeah, so otherwise you'll go to one side or the other side. Right. And you're going to get up again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wild. I love that you're picking up these skills. It's like every job. Not only are you getting hired to do a job, but you're also learning to do other jobs on those jobs. Yeah. Just, yeah. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. You become like a Swiss Army knife. Like Karen could yeah, do it all. Certainly. I mean, you know, that's the really good thing for me that happened. Bob Anderson picking me up. Yeah. And then doing things. In theaters, learning things. God, you know, that's what I've, I've been doing all my life. I'm still learning. Yeah. You know, new things, new technology. What do you do with new technology? How are you going to make it work for you? You know, that's the idea. Right. But you're always learning, and it's really good. Even though you can't operate that technology, but you know how it works. Sure. Get a basic understanding. Yeah, exactly. And then you know what you can give and what you. Where you can pull back on and all that. Are you good at like giving yourself permission to learn? Like, are you good at being bad at something at first? Yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah, I can be bad at things, but I can pick them up very quickly. Yeah. Like learning, it's like you have to learn. Yeah. Uh, if you want to carry on going in this industry, I mean, what happened on Dark Crystal was one day Lucas came on set and uh, took, uh, spoke to you. Team that can be paint Kiran for you know half a day or something like that. I will call his agent and uh, book him. And uh, even yeah, whenever you need, let me know, and then I can run work around him. And what happened was that Lucas Bob put me put me into his thing, mm -hmm. uh, Return of the Jedi. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, I was the first one to test uh, test uh, ebook stuff. Oh wow. How would they look? How would they move? What happens if they do a tremble or I fall or whatever? Would sure. they be able to get up and walk or, you know, whatever? And I tried, uh, after, you know, getting the design right with the makeup guys mm -hmm. and uh, got that all right. And what happened was that then did that uh, roll. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, kneeling roll. Sure. And then I couldn't get up. Oh, no. <laughs> it looked like, oh, I'm flat. Sure. <laughs> I couldn't sit up and it looked like, yep, this costume is not going to let me sit up, let, let alone, you know, get me up again completely. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it looked really, really strange. And, you know, spoke to you, Lucas, about that. And he was really happy, even well, as long as you can do a roll. Then we can cut and we can get you up in, you know, in different ways and all that. Sure. And those suits are big. You got a lot. Speaking of, there's a lot of padding yeah. on those things. And yeah. The, yeah. That was what was stopping you, you know, to get, get back into sitting position. Oh, sure. You just end up rolling. Can't. Yeah. Get... And you can't move. And that's it. Yeah. You need to pull you up again. <laughs> you become one of those like uh, teetle totters. Like yeah, balls yeah, where you kind of yeah, yeah, just gotta yeah. roll you. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you also play a droid in Return of the Jedi? Yeah, play a droid that was drumming on the skulls. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But that was the droid who brought one of the you know, that was one of the droid who mm -hmm. brought me in uh to uh Harrison. Harrison uh -huh. you know, into the into the village. Right. The first time. Yeah, he's tied to this, you know, long bamboo stick, and there are four evils, you know, bringing many 
Uh-huh. I love the random things that you can say that you've played when you think about it. Yeah. It's it's, it's a pretty good resume of just random things. Really good because I ended up doing, well, doubling a lot of other Evox as well for stunts. Oh, cool. But that was good because Lucas went, you know, you do that. Yeah. Why like, don't you do that? That makes sense because the more useful you are, the more they're going to use you. Yeah, that's it. I see so, what you're doing, Kieran. Yeah, I ended up doing all, almost all the stunts at Oster Studio in London. I couldn't make it to America. Sure. So I only did everything in London for them. But the funny thing was, I met Lucas on the first movie, mm-hmm. uh, The Hope. Then I met him on uh, Raiders of the Lost Dark. Right, right. Uh, where... I don't kill a monkey, but I didn't kill the monkey. Somebody <laughs> brought me the dates. <laughs> right. You brought the yeah. good dates. Somebody messed yeah, with your food. Dates. Somebody messed with it, yeah. I'll protect and, you. And <laughs> uh, then I met him again on, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. It's like it, it was always you pass each other in the hallway, and then yeah. it finally happened. It's, small, it's a small industry. It's a very small it's world. Very small. I mean, I couldn't believe I've worked with him so many times now. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. You also, you got to work on um, uh, The Sign of Four, which yeah. Jeremy Brent is my favorite Sherlock Holmes. Wow, he, he is a brilliant actor. Oh, you know, fast yeah. led Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, but really, really brilliant, and brilliant actor. Very friendly. Really cool. nice guy to work with. Yeah, he's very, very able, really, really down to earth. That's cool. And you got to be on the poster with him? Pretty neat. You know, yeah, Not yeah bad. That, was, that was my uh first poster. Yeah, how long did that makeup take? Because you're in like a full get up with those two hours. That's actually not bad. That's two. not bad. That was only the head. Uh, oh, okay. Remember, I take it back. <laughs> there are no hands, there's no body, it's all uh costume. Oh, smart, smart. Yeah. It's a Tonga, it's a human being, right? He comes from Pacific Islands. Mm-hmm. From Tonga. Right. Yeah. Uh, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I see it. So he's a human, a small human. Uh, right. Yeah, but that's, uh, that was really neat because when I met the director and to work with Tom Thor. Yeah. I was his sidekick. But it was brilliant to work with him as well because I always admired Tom Thor in a lot of other things. Sure. It's also really neat that like the caliber of actors you've been able to work with because you learn yeah. from other actors in scenes and you've worked oh, with yeah. the greats. No, it, I mean, it's really one thing that David Neven told me in my first movie that you have got a twinkle in your eye, Kieran. Yeah. There's something tells me that you want to be in this, you are going to be in this industry. For a yeah. long time, and you should learn everything. Don't be like an actor and go into your trailer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you literally told me that. You went, you know, look through camera, look yeah. through this, ask questions to people. Yeah, learn. See what actors are doing. Learn, pick up, pick up, and you'll be there. He was right. Yep. That's nuts. What did what did you do on Braveheart? Braveheart, Simon Crane. Give me a call. Uh, another top coordinator in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, he gave me a call to do hangings, crop hangings. And, uh, the idea was that uh, in the castle, on the tower and other areas, people were being thrown with a noose around their neck. Right. And I went from outside of the tower there's a little pathway at the top mm-hmm. of the tower or about three quarter way down there's a walking thing a little little kind of a, what do you call it where you can go out and repair something or whatever right yeah right and uh one of the stun stun guy was holding me under his arm with the nose from oh. my neck and, it me. <laughs> no. and i was uh, gonna hang hitting the door Bumping into the door every time I went down. Oh. And because once you are hang, you are still swinging back and forth. Right. And you can't put your hands out. Oh, right. Oh, no. 
Like you, you just got to eat it. Yeah, you can catch it slowly move your neck around because you can take it by, by the side of your, side of your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You've been, you've been hanged, Kieran. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, I was hanged. <laughs> and it was, it was really funny because the director, I mean, he was laughing his head off. You sure? I was turning my head off. Sure. Was, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can say you don't commit. <laughs> I commit. I was committing and I was screaming my head off. <laughs> I think the people who were way out looking at what we were, we were doing, they must have heard me. Yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> bet. What the hell is going on? That's right. I think they're hanging a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it did happen because uh, the stunty who was uh, throwing me. Oh, great. His mom and dad were there. Oh, his dad was a stunt guy anyway. And his mom was there. Oh. And uh, gave, gave him a little bit of bollocking. How can you do that to a little child? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. From there, was it you went Braveheart and then Titanic shortly after? Titanic, yeah. Again, Simon Crane gave me a call to work on Titanic. Right. He knows you can hang well. Uh, yep. Yeah. And, well, there were no hanging this time. Right, right. Uh, Give you a break. Falling and rolling down the deck and stuff like that. Whew. And even I will need a child to do that. Well, you know, you are perfect. But why don't you get ready to fly out to uh, Baja, Mexican side? Oh. So, so we filmed everything in Rosarita. Interesting. Uh, in the studios. And this was the second time I was going to work with James Cameron. Right. The first time was Aliens. Right. So, you know, Killing it. It was the second time, and I was trying to hide from him. You know, we had a big meeting with the on the first day when we got on set, and we were on the ship, and I was trying to hide from him, like going, I don't want him to see me. And he found me, and he went, Oh, Kieran, give me a hug. And he came around and gave me a hug. <laughs> and he was like, going, Okay, thank you. <laughs> and everybody, all the standing room going, Ooh. Kieran Frank with the, you know, James. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's, a, it's that twinkle. It, it sticks around, Kieran. Yeah, they know. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> and see, you've got Aliens, you've got Titanic, you've got Superman. You're just killing it already. And then it's like, what else is pretty big on the corner? I know you got into the first Harry Potter. Uh, well, before Harry Potter, I couldn't do the Harry Potter to begin with. Oh. Because I was involved with Lord of the Rings. Oh, right. That's all the same time. Yeah. Dude. Well, towards the end of the Lord of the Rings, it clashed with Harry Potter. Gotcha. Harry Potter. So I ended up in uh, Lord of the Rings from, uh, I think, August, August 1999. Ooh. And I think finished till 2003, October. Ooh. Something it's pretty, like that. It's a pretty good run. Yeah. How did that happen? Because that was in New Zealand, and you're in London at this time. New Zealand, and that was in 2003, yeah, when I came back. I, mean, I didn't stay there all the time, mm -hmm. but I stayed uh, one year completely. Wow. How did that happen? How did you get the scale doubles for that? Uh, the story goes, because I had no idea how they, they found me. The story goes that when they, I was doing a fitting set, Quits a workshop. She mm -hmm. mentioned work, workshop in 98. It was the end, December. And it was uh, around Christmas time. So, you know, I went there to do the fittings. And then I was going to stay for the little party for the Christmas. Sure. And after, the, after I did the fittings, and I think John Stevenson, uh, Spoke to me and went, Kieran, you are being headhunted. And I went, what do you mean headhunted? And he went, there is a director looking for you. And we got an email from him that he he knows that you do come in here often to do fitting and all that. And we have been asked to give you his email. Ah, uh -huh. good sign. Right. 
Yeah, suddenly, and I went, okay, what's the director? And they went, Peter Jackson, where is he from? New Zealand. And I went, okay, uh, I uh, don't know anything about him. Mm-hmm. I never heard his name. Quite a lot of people knew him, but I didn't. Sure. At that time. And I went, what, what has he done? And they went, brain dead and uh, meet the feebles and all of that came up. And I went, can I see anything or, you know, have you got anything that I can look at? And now uh, I try and put brain dead. Oh. <laughs> of the brain dead. And I was looking at that and, you know, the head flying and hands yep. flying, <laughs> blood everywhere. No, <laughs> Peter can't direct. No, I did ask him what the movie was. Sure. Uh, uh, John even Lord of the Ring and my eyes really opened up. Yeah. I read books, books when I was young. Oh, cool. But that's why I got interested in that, Peter Jackson. But then looking at all the stuff and it was like, is Peter going to direct this movie? Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and when, yeah, Kieran, he is a brilliant director. Now I'm going, but, and he goes, no, there are no buts. Kieran is really going to do it. He has to email, contact him, and I went, okay, I will do that. And uh, in the new year, I gave uh, the email to my agent, and he sent them an email. And then I got on to Lord of the Rings. Wow. So I was being pedantic. And the story is uh, uh, on the first premiere in London, I think, uh, that I asked Fran, oh, you know, what happened? I mean, I understand that you were headhunting me. Oh, you know, how did you know about me? And uh, Stephen, every workshop in, well, most of the workshop in America, they know about you. Workshop in Britain and some parts of Europe, they know you. But your name was coming up all the time. And there you go. And I'm going, wow, thank you very much for thinking about me. And then he turned around to me and said, you know, we saw your CV. Oh. <laughs> Never about CV, right? And uh, Fran went, you know, when you came in, we were frightened. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it was like, what? And I went, why? And I went, all the movies you had done. Yeah. And I went, I'm frightened of you because, like, you know what you did, what I saw. And I was like, is that going to happen or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really good, you know, all the things that happens to me. Yeah. It turned into a talk at the end of the day. Sure. <laughs> That's bonkers. When you signed on, did you know like the amount of different roles you'd be playing? No, I was only going to be Frodo. Wow. Skeleton. And uh, Peter always told me, you are a skeleton, ball, but you are going to be acting as well. Yeah. You're not going to be a straight. You're not going to be a trusted double. Right. You're going to learn about their mannerisms. You're going to learn about their movements. What they are thinking, that's what you need to think as well. Because you're going to ask Elijah what he's thinking and why is he moving, the way he's moving, or whatever. Because you need to do that. What a master class. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the thing was that you need to learn to move like them, pick up their moves. And if you can do that, that would be brilliant. And I think I can I've kind of go wrong to 70%. You can't mm-hmm. get you can't get 100% with any humans. Sure. It's going to be difficult because humans are going to change things in their moments, in their mannerisms, and it's very difficult to keep up with humans that way. Sure. Now, the one thing I learned on that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I, I love that you're playing like, all the hobbits because they're all so different and they move different and they act different. Yeah, what happened was that I had a team and there was another actor, normal light actor called Sean Allen, mm-hmm. who was mm-hmm. helping me to train them, right? Mm-hmm. And what we found was that uh, three three of the doubles were from India and the girl called Fawn was from Thailand. And we trained them, but to work with masks is difficult. Sure. If you don't know about masks, and when you can't see, you are looking through a, a pinpoint 
Oh. A literally a pinpoint. And you've got, re- got, you've got no peripherals vision or anything sure. like that. Because you've got to know exactly what, where you're going and what you're doing and how you're going to move. And how, I mean, you're not going to avoid everything. You are obviously going to bump into things as well. Sure. So how to maneuver and remember where things are. When you bump into something, you go, okay, this is something about that distance. And you figure that out in your mind. It's difficult. It's not easy. Yeah, you're working blind. You're working blind. Go, you know, most of my work or us, the uh, body puppeteers, mm-hmm. we go through that a lot. Sure. All of us, Eric, Tom, Brian, you know, all of us. And, um, and we all know that we are going to bump into things. But you want to pick up, oh, yeah, there's a table there. I must not bump into it. And you avoid it. And you bump into something else. Right. I, okay, now I don't have to bump into that and that. And you right. know, you keep the thing. And you get it right. Sure. You get it right. I mean, if you out of 10 decks, if you get six, seven, taken right. Whew. How many times were you tossed by Vigo Mortensen? Many, many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> He would sneak up on me, pick me up and throw me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was again funny the way it happened. Was, uh, remember, he came in after another actor. Right. Who had to leave or left. And uh, what happened was that I didn't meet him. He had no idea who I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened was that I ended up doing all five because of, you know, my people. And sure. Peter came on to me and went, whoever's leading the scene, you are doing all, you know, that character of the hobby. I ended up in Golf Life. And with Vigo, uh, we were in the bar, free bar. Ah. Where he pick him up and take him into the room and throw him. Right. So when he picked me up and took me into the room, we did that. And then he had to throw me. He kind of blessed me. Oh. <laughs> and I went down and I went, Peter is not going to buy that. And I knew it. And Peter went, cut. And he was like, uh, we go throw him. And I went, we go really throw me. <laughs> and he did that, but he did it gently. Mm-hmm. A little bit further, but gently. Sure. And we are going for another take. And I went, we go throw me. Make it look like you are throwing me. Mm-hmm. And he threw me. Still didn't work the way I was suspecting. And Peter was going, need a little bit violently. And I turned around to Vigo and I went, come with me. And I went, Vigo, I must turn me. I done stunts all my life, as well as acting and all that. Mm-hmm. And I can take the thing, punch me in the back. And he went, and he went, oh, they're coming up. And I went, yeah, I've got a pad. <laughs> I've got elbow pads, knee pads, and I've got a back pad. I'm going on my back. All on my side, I'll take it. Either way you throw me, I'll take it. But throw me. Yeah. And he went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he picked me up and he threw me. And I went off the set. <laughs> <laughs> And they were laughing in ghetto. Peter was laughing in ghetto. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got killed and going. <laughs> <laughs> that's when he found out what stuntman is the magic word, it seems. I know yeah, he loves stunt people. And that's when uh, actors think, yeah, we can throw them or we can punch them. No, you can't. You have to still learn to pull back. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he overcommitted. It's like one or the other. Yeah. yeah. So my, my favorite scene in The Lord of the Rings, specifically the first one, is when v, when Aragorn lets Frodo go. He says, like, I would have gone with you to the end. Was that yeah. you? Yeah, that was me. That would go because I had to walk backwards. We go walking towards me. Uh-huh. And I'm backing off. Remember Frodo is backing off. Yes. And he does a banana turn again. Yeah. Now, because you got no peripherals, yeah, peripheral uh, vision. Sure. If you go, you don't know where you are. And I did look up. Sure. 
Mm-hmm. Down at the right time, or often too early, or too late, and things like that. And we took quite a few days, and Peter went, okay. And I didn't come out of the market, and come out, and I went, no, I need to think, I need to think. Sure. And then uh, Rico came round to me, and he went, I got an idea, kid. Look at my leg, and I'll point you, point you in the direction with my leg or my feet. Ah, smart. Uh, yeah, smart. That was clever. That was very really good thinking as well. It's a pretty good team. Really good team. He's really, really nice. Well, all of them were nice to work with, all the actors. You know, very, very generous to stun people, to a lot of people. Did you ever learn to swim? No. I still yeah. can't swim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pluck my way into stops in swimming. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do it all, Kieran. We found your one weakness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is my weakness. I can't swim. I rely on vessel. Sure, and whoever's rowing. Yeah, as soon as I put my vessel on, I know I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be, you know, then I can do the strokes and stuff. Sure, you know, be there, right? Because I know that I'm not going to sink. But without vessel, no, I wouldn't be able to do strokes or anything. How long was it from the time that like you met Vigo to the scene in the boats? When he's rowing in your that was a long time, long time. Yeah, I think a year, uh, year and a half or something like that, probably. I think. No, of course, that was first movie. Uh, it would be uh, within a year, but still a long time. Sure. Does Ian McKellen give good hugs? Yeah. Yeah, he has to. He does. It... I had to hug him a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? Yes. Yeah. As, as well as I think Billy's character Pippi had yes. to hug him. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that scene when Frodo first sees Gandalf and jumps into the cart. I was yeah. like, had to have been you? I was like, how fun. Exactly. That was on the stunt. I had to make it look like a stunt because Peter would not give me a stunt. Oh, sure. He <laughs> was amended about that. Bad. He don't, you're not going to jump into the car. Not in the back or not in the front. Make it look like you are, but you are not. And I went, mm. why? And he went, if you break your leg, that's it. I can't find somebody like you. Sure. You made yourself useful. Very useful. <laughs> Unfortunately, no stunts. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did some stunts. Well, quite a few stunts in that. But something like that, it wouldn't let me do. Just if I missed it or whatever. Was it weird at the end? Because movies shoot for like, you know, uh, months at a time, but not four years at a time. No. No, I mean, yeah, it was because at the end of the year, uh, fourth, year, uh, fourth year, yeah, ninety nine to two thousand and three, mm-hmm. that we all bonded really well. Yeah, we were friends from the beginning. It, it didn't matter whether it was Ian or a guy sweeping the floor. We all mixed. We partied together. We, you know, we had a good time. It was that's what Peter wanted from the very beginning. That. We are going to be together for four years. Go, why not be friends, our big family? Yeah. But it was weird coming back to London after four years. I bet. And that's so special. Like to do that because, yeah. you know, it's it's a gig. It's a freelance job. Yeah. You go from one job to another. Yeah, exactly. But this was like a long gig. That's pretty cool. Do you have a favorite or like a most proud moment of your work on Lord of the Rings when you think about it? I think I enjoyed it so much yeah i did i really enjoyed it i mean seeing in the canoe oh yeah with the back blocking the pot and look like i don't do that i can't swim but i can't tell him that could i yeah <laughs> because i admit peter would, peter would have gone what the hell do you mean you can't swim <laughs> why is he in a boat <laughs> yeah i bluffed my way in yeah <laughs> i mean i bluffed my way in a movie called Megalite as well oh, right <laughs> I did the, the big jump into River Rhine yeah. from the bridge for middle line. Whew. And that was because I was wearing a wetsuit. No, no, that I will come back up again. Right. <laughs> so, uh, with, uh, with water work, yeah, I did. Even in, in Titanic, you know, I did uh, quite a few falls into water. Uh, then I did uh, tip tanks. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks. Sure. Yeah, I didn't know a few of them. You know, I got over with it because that's, I know, uh, you know, was there. 
skipping meal. It's like as long as you have the, you're like, I can swim with a vest on. Yep. And that's <laughs> it. That's it. And then go up, you know, then go walk around every day. I, I, I also, I can't believe you've done so many things. And while you're doing Lord of the Rings, all these movies, you just decided, why not a world record? Yeah. You got a world record around this time too. Yeah, because what happened was Guinness World, world Record uh, did a research on me. Cool. And found out that there's nobody smaller than me in the stunt. Sure. So they gave me that record. Amazing. So that was really brilliant. Then one day, this was not even going to be in the record at all. Uh, the other thing I, I, I wanted to do, and one, one was that stunt people. They go out and do face gum for fun or do this or that and all of that. Sure. And uh, I was like thinking with my nephew, what can we do? No, I can't do face gum. I haven't got enough weight to come down. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, free from free fall from the plane. I will never come down with a normal parachute. Sure. Uh, I will always float up. Uh, you know, that thing I can't do. I can't go up and down because in reality, I can't swim. So, you know, I should not be doing open dives in the sea or anything like sure. that. So what can I do? And my nephew came up with, why not bring walking? Your nephew did this? <laughs> He's like, yeah, his yeah, idea? Why, yeah. Why not? Why don't you do wing walking? And he arranged it. And uh, people, when they found out what my height was, and they rank Guinness World Record and think we think we have got the smallest guy who's ever going to do the wing booking. And they go, I didn't plan this one for Guinness World Record or anything. I'm not, not my nephew. It just happened. Wow. How do you, are you not scared? <laughs> you get nervous. You suck a little bit at the beginning. I bet. <laughs> or tumble. Sure. Like tumble a little bit at the beginning. But once you do it and you're up there, on the plane, you know, tied up properly and all that, and you uh -huh. know, you're not going to go anywhere, and you can go, you loop into the loop and all that stuff. Once you, you know, you, you're not going to get away with anything, or get away anywhere. Yeah. And then you start doing it. I'm stressed just thinking about it. <laughs> it's just that when I was doing up high falls, every time I go up, yeah, I am trembling. I'm not, I don't. I do. I look down where I have to fall. I know exactly where I have to hit my airbag. Uh -huh. And then you don't look. And just when they go, turn the camera, have a quick look, that's where I need to go. And when you keep in your mind and you kick, you will kick, you don't kick high. Sure. It's a little kick to just to get you that further away from the wall or wherever and onto the airbag. I've seen the picture of you on the plane just on top yeah. of the wings. Just, yeah. Yeah. I got scared just looking at it, Kieran. Yeah, and it was a thousand feet high in the air. Oh, just... God, that was fun. It was <laughs> cold. It was cold up there, but it was fun. Yeah? Is it loud? Because the wind? Yeah, it is loud. Uh, G-force is there. Oh. When, you, when you try to wear, you'll find, oh, my hand used to go back and I had to bring it back again. I can feel that G-force. A little bit, not that high. It's not like training for astronaut or anything like that. Sure. But there's still that little G force you can feel. That is nuts. And how long? How long were you up there? About ten minutes. Nothing more than that. But in ten minutes, you can do so much. Right. In ten minutes at the most. Man, there's a lot of trust in that, Kieran. You got to you trust your trust equipment. So <laughs> yeah, in 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 stunts. Yeah. You Trust everybody's around you. You know, there are safety guys. The stunters are not, they do stunts, but on, on your scene, they might not be doing anything because they are on the set looking off. It's a teamwork. Everything is teamwork. Even in uh, body puppeteer, we rely on uh, puppeteers who are operating the head. Oh, yeah, yeah. And all that. It's all teamwork. teamwork yeah. Was it cool to go back for The Hobbit because it'd been a long time? Yeah, that was really good fun to go back to the Hobbit. And it was really, uh, really uh, how did I find out? In 2009, I was in New Zealand at a wedding of a guy called, you know, makeup guy. Uh -huh. And uh, his wife, Mel, called Liz, 
they were getting married and I've known them from the Lord of the Rings, from, you know, very big name. Sure. And then we got to come, uh, come to a whole wedding and go free out there. And uh, met Peter and Del Caro. Uh-huh. Uh, he was going to direct the movie and I met them both at the wedding. And just before the wedding, Del Caro went, after wedding, in the reception, we need to talk to you very quickly. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, in the reception, they, they spoke to me about Hobbit. That like, you know, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Yeah, you're going to be the uh, skill level for Martin, but you're going to be, you know, this goblin and that goblin, and you're going to do this and stunts for kids and stuff like that. But you are for it and all that. We had a good, good 15 minute, minutes talk at the wedding. I knew I was going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like lost. We got to go yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that, but I didn't realize that Del Tiro was going to walk up because of the time it took. Sure. You know, we had to do other things as well. And this time you got to do Legolas. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that was uh, Orlando's idea. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Orlando came up with that idea to Peter. Well, why don't we do this? With Kiran, don't tell Kiran until the last minute when we get him in the makeup and then we tell him actually what's happening. Uh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> they told me do this before so I could learn the fight. Oh, sure. But it was fun. a surprise to me. Wow. Completely. It came out of the blue. Uh, they had to look for a wig from the Lord of the Rings, you know, the legless wig. Uh-huh. They- it and breathe on me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you wear it well. <laughs> I wear it well. <laughs> but it was good. I had to pick up a fight. That was quite a good fight as well. Yeah, it was. It was um, um, yeah, it was uh, Orlando's idea to you know, do that. I love it. And then, again, you, you went Lord of the Rings, and then you came back for The Hobbit. You did Return of the Jedi, and then you come back to Star Wars. Star Wars was really funny because I came back from Hobby and within a week I gave a call to people on the Star Wars saying I'm back. I left a message to Neil Scandler mm-hmm. that Neil, if you want me, I'm back again. And uh, wherever, and I put my mobile down and it started ringing. And it was Neil. And he went, Neil turned around to me and he went, Kieran, you're not going anywhere, are you? No. Uh, you're definitely not going anywhere for another big movies or anything. I went not. I've done my big movies at the moment. I go, yeah, I'm fine. I'm free. And when you are in, go within a week, I was in in in, in Star Wars again. He's like, good, because you're in my movies now. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to lock you in. Yeah, no, that was, and that's where I met Tom. I know you're you're on Tom and Derek. Because they're yeah. in the Lug of yeah. Beast and you were Tito yeah. on top. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That was a good character play with them underneath me. Yeah. And they were really good. That was really fun working with Nick and Tom on that. Yeah. Because we had to, we had to do rehearsals after rehearsals to get it right. Sure. Like me trying to write a, a mechanical beast. Yeah. And, uh, go to act like that. There are only the legs of the beast. And uh, Tom was operating the head as well. Right. It was really fun. It was really great. I love that. And when you're talking about like teams, you know, see, you're seeing Tito on a beast. You don't realize it's Kieran, Tom, Derek. Like, I love seeing the magic of what we're looking at. Exactly. And it's all about timing between three of us. Yeah. What, what happens? I mean, if they're, if they're rock. Right. Then I'm going to keep my balance as well. It's all that timing of work and how mm-hmm. they do and You know, what, what happened coming when we were in Abu Dhabi doing this thing. And we didn't realize, oh, well, we knew that it will sink. Sure. Because into the sand. But we didn't realize that it will sink quite a, quite a bit. And Tom and Derek were struggling. I mean, you know, they pulled it, they pulled it off really did but they were like really screaming inside yeah and they could walk and those screams were giving them the energy they wanted 
and I can understand that. And I was like, going, how can I need to sing up? I can hear you guys. And I'm putting my weight on you. Fuck. <laughs> You're just having a blast up top. <laughs> Last time while they were working on. <laughs> I think you got the better end of the stick on that one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think they got, they got their own back on me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't help with that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and I know. So that was Force Awakens. I know after that was uh, Rogue One. Rogue One. Where you got to play a really cool looking character in the in the cell. Yeah, in the cell with that tinted yeah. uh, monster, monster, early monster. Were you blind in that one? Completely. Wow. Completely. Beginning, uh, 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 we did a couple of things that uh, that that changed their mind. Uh, what happened was uh, we, he had to do a walk, and uh, Brian Herring was operating the head. Cool. And we had to do the walk, and Brian was going four o'clock, ten four, ten five, ten one, and go, you know we are working with the game, and I decided to give him the strong or her just to see the sure. female character. Right. And uh, I decided to give her that strong walk. Yeah. That strong walk. And we did that, but they decided, no, we don't want that. Now, there's a backstory going on, the thing I did. Uh, the backstory is that sometime in the past, before the sale, both characters have met each other. Mm. And I think... More uh, the early monster at Triton, Felicity's character. Gotcha. Once once. And then now they're in the cell. Oh, there's a little bad blood going on. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, uh, I think that's the backstory. Interesting. Uh, the, the story. Yeah. So, that was it because well, when she escapes and she is like, Going, ah, you got away from me, kind of. Yeah. But that was a good character to play. I mean, it was a really good character to play. It was quite in the cell, it was easy because I wasn't really moving. Sure. One turn or something like that, but not really walking or anything. Complaining didn't matter over there. That's not a bad gig. If you're, <laughs> what are you doing today? I'm laying down. <laughs> yeah, I'm laying down. I'm just going to snore inside the mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a little nap, just a tiny nap. Actually, yeah. that's a real method because the character's also sleeping. So I see yeah, what you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you commit, Kieran. <laughs> you commit. Hey, come on. I'm not acting now and again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you did that. I know in uh, The Last Jedi, you got to play, you got to wear a suit this time. And then was that a head? That was a full mechanical head you're wearing? Yeah, I'm wearing a full mechanical head. That will blind as well. Oh, really? Yeah, that was blind as well. And then we did the rehearsal with that long walk. Uh -huh. uh, there was a walk in there, very much PP8 and something like that. And there were uh, people moving in, in my direct and crossing and all that. Yeah. And also, I, I remember bumping into people and trying to figure out who they are and going to them after the rehearsal. Great. Look, I can't see. Look, right. Keep an eye on me. Either I can bump into you or you'll feel a kick from me as well. Sure. Moving. A gentle kick, not a hard kick. Yeah. <laughs> a a kick. little love tap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, keep moving. But no, that was a cool character to play. Do you ever get to see <laughs> the work that you're doing or most of the time you're blind? Yeah, there have been a few things where I can see and you can go, if I have one, they can create. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. And then I know in The Rise of Skywalker, you got to play uh, the little character at the big festival with Ray yeah, and the uh, necklace. Then, then began, um, yes, then, yes. Then began, yeah, then began being able really good to play. Another great one. Uh, putting the necklace around Ray. Yeah. Yeah, that was really brilliant. It was really funny that I ended up working with Daisy on two different movies. I mean, with her. Yeah. Now, when you see BB-8 now, are you like, I'll get you soon? Yep. <laughs> Come near me. Yeah. I, want to kill you. I want to send you off. <laughs> That's right. There's a never-ending feud of trying to catch him ever since Tito. 
Exactly. Hey, uh, many fun thing, Kido. I bet. And then to be uh, Nambi Gambi. When you so are you also blind as Nambi Gambi? Uh yeah. That was like talking to Daisy. Uh huh. And three before the tech. Uh, I mean, I turned on to Daisy. I went, look, I am going to be blind again. Right. And you can help me. Just give me the height where you are going to be when you kneel down for her. Sure. For her to put the necklace on you. And she went, can you look at fine? And she knelt down. And she went, I'll keep that height all the time. And I was like, one, two, three. With open eyes, three, and then it was like uh, half the side, and going one, two, three, four, and then it was close side, and it was like going, oh, and now what's happening? It um, learning about muscles. Uh, yeah, you get your muscles to do all the work for you. Sure. But, you know exactly how high. Going, you know when you lift, you can feel your muscles where they are. And that cover you work it out. Gotcha. And that cover up out there. And if she go a little bit higher, then it's not going to work. Because then it probably I will hit her forehead. Sure. So this day will be really good. Even you know, I'll keep the same height for you. Wow, you have to have such like cognizance of your body doing stuff like that, because it's all <laughs> it's all in your it's arms. All, it's all muscle memory. Yeah. It's all muscle memory, everything you do. Has to be with muscle memory. <sighs> when you do mine, when you do a wall, yeah. If you learn to do the wall against the wall and feel your muscles, ah. Oh. You know, let's say you are putting. How do you make sure that you are selling that pressure you are going against? Right. And you start tightening those muscles. Wow. The one thing you need to tighten and go mine. Helps you to do body puppetry work. Mask work, my training has come very useful in doing creatures. Yeah. You know, everything I did, beginning of my life, I've been using that techniques still in creatures, creature work. Wow. What are the odds? Who'd have it's, thought? It, it, I mean, I'm very lucky that Stomaria Master coming back to him, beginning. Yeah. You know, learning things from Stomaya Master that I never ever thought that I would be able to use them again. And all my, I mean, Dark Crystal started the crystal book off. And here you are, decades later, still using it. Yeah. That's yeah. when you know it works. <laughs> yeah. And still using the technique that you started with. Wow. Well, even though technology can move and technology can, you know, do a lot of things. Yeah. But I still can use the same techniques with the new technology i love that that's so cool and just like that we've been talking for over an hour kieran you survived Brilliant. <laughs> this Thank has been you. a blast this is so fun it was great to meet you well we went through a lot of things yeah <laughs> <Lot> of <moments. laughs> really i try good. i try <laughs> Now, before I release you into the wild, I got to ask, where can people follow you online? Where can they find your stuff? My website is called littlekiran.com. Great. I'm on Twitter, littlekiran.sa, uh, whatever else is happening around yeah. me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. You're findable. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. 
Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the shows, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, Victor, Jim, and Chris. Your support means so, so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.